Hello, I'm Cheryl Chedwell. I'm the Foster Care uh, Audits and Rates Branch Chief here at the California Department of Social Services. Um, I'm going to provide you some updates on the Level of Care Protocol implementation. Well, we've come a long way this far, so I know many of you are wondering what's the next date or what's the next phase and what's the criteria for um, implementation. We will continue to delay the implementation, the full implementation of the LLC protocol to other home-based family settings, meaning relatives, resource, other resource families. We are going to continue the implementation of the LLC protocol with FFAs only. And the only condition this time is that um, we are allowing counties to use the LLC protocol with all of FFA placements. What that means is currently you are only limited to using the FFA, um, I mean the protocol for FFA placements for kids placed between December 1 of 2017 up to March of 18 and now. Well now it's no restriction on the time period that children are placed in FFAs. There is no longer restriction of whether a child moves from one FFA to another FFA. Um, there is now just FFA populations only. We are not implementing the specialized care increment plans either. Those will not be implemented until we are ready to go full, um, full application of the tool with other resource families. There's a couple of key points that I want to remind counties and providers about. Um, the purpose of the LOC protocol, I want folks to remember, it is to give credit to the resource parents for their parenting and the kinds of activities that we typically would expect parents to provide. Those are sort of your basic things. But it's really mostly to provide an incentive or a care and supervision payment for those things that are above sort of the typical things that kids experience. Um, so this is an, an opportunity for us, it, for us to really provide that kind of credit to those resource parents who often don't have a voice or an opportunity to express the kinds of things that they are providing to children when they're parenting. A couple other things I want to mention. Um, for counties, I want to remind you to communicate, to communicate, to communicate. Um, implementation, we know, has been a little rocky, but it's very important that you communicate with your provider. One of the ways to really do that is to make sure your placement agreements are consistent with what is entered into the system on the payment side for your eligibility workers. So it's very important that eligibility workers work with the child welfare social worker to make sure that the amounts are entered correctly. It's also important to communicate to the agency when the rate does not change. If there's a basic level rate and that's the determination, it's very important that you communicate that to the agency as well. Um, we've had some concerns that that piece has not been addressed because typically your notice of actions only go out when there's a rate change. So I encourage you to review that with your, your eligibility staff and making sure that when a determination is made and there is no change in the rate that you're communicating with your agency. The other thing that I want to remind folks is to keep in mind that in the interest of doing what's good for kids, when we have issues that we're not able to settle and you lift those issues up to the state, I'm most first first of all are going to encourage you to resolve it at the local level, but to, at the end of the day, we want you to do what's good for kids. That is the bottom line to this whole approach to even CCR and the work that we're doing. Um, the other factor to remember is that CFTs are not a place to discuss rates or money, but it's a place where if it's available that you can gather information that will inform the usage of the tool. So I want also providers to keep in mind that your reach out to the counties for the purpose of having CC, uh, CFTs, that's real important. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to remind you also to keep in mind that this rate structure was designed to really pay for it, supplemental or enhanced rates. If you've been caring for a child for a while and some things change, 
It does not necessarily mean that it's going to trigger automatically a rate increase. There might be other services that your child or your resource parent may need. So keep that in mind too as well. So as we move forward, I just want to encourage folks that I really appreciate the support that we have been getting uh, from you by lifting up to us your questions, uh, your concerns. Um, with respect to implementation, we are in the final process of finalizing the edits to the tool. Uh, we will be releasing an ACL off county letter, um, hopefully before the end of this month. Uh, stay tuned and look out for a save the date on a webinar. Uh, the webinar, once that webinar is released, the webinar is, will be designed to go through the highlights of what changes that we have made in the tool. Um, once that webinar is conducted, we will then be able to announce a real date of implementation. So what um, the contingencies for that real date of implementation really will allow for some time frames for the counties to make any policy changes they need to make uh, based on some of the changes that we've made to the tool and to give them an opportunity to retrain staff who have not been trained. So those are a few things that you can expect. We are working diligently to release a Q&A, uh, um, question and answer. We have about 43 questions that we think um, that we uh, want to get to the field immediately. So uh, stay tuned for that. We uh, hopefully will be able to get that out sooner than a letter. Uh, so those are my updates. And as always, keep doing the work that you're doing. We appreciate your patience in this implementation process. And uh, once again, thank you all.